Okay. So can you tell me, Sophie, what was your childhood like? Really, I, my memories are very loving. I'm very lucky. I've got a very close family. Um, and I would say just very, you know, we did a lot of activities. We were always going out um, doing things, you know, sports and things like that. So very, very active, um, obviously with music in there as well so I did uh, amateur dramatics when I was younger and my dad did it for a little while with me and then my sister did it so it was always kind of you know including the family which was nice um but yeah just lots of love very lucky that we're all really you know we all really get along um yeah that would that would probably what I would say in a nutshell what, what kind of sport did you like playing when you were young um, I used to love like rounders. I think like, do you have rounders in the States? I mean, it's it's like baseball. ish. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, I'm looking now. I got some of my baby's food on my face. I feel like I have. I don't know what that is. Um, yeah. So rounders, a uh, bit of rugby, touch rugby, which is very British sport as well. Um, so we'd go swimming a lot. Uh, just lots of yeah, just lots of actually anything really, badminton things like that. Yeah. Do you do any of that now or? Yeah, I do. I'm, I'm quite an active person. I would say I try and do some kind of physical activity three to four times a week. <laughs> Badminton is my absolute favorite. Just like go, go on the court and burn some calories. But um, I do classes quite a lot, um, slightly crossfit stuff. Okay. But, but I'm not really, a, I'm not very strong. So I just go and don't really improve but I enjoy the I enjoy the the sessions um where everyone around me is like lifting really heavy weights and I'm just like I just here because I just enjoy this kind of group um comp competitive activity rather than just going to the gym and like running on the treadmill on my own so I do that quite a lot uh but my, my husband is a rugby player so I'm kind of surrounded by a lot of fit active people so I have to keep up with them as well was there anything in your childhood that stands out to you, like a fond memory that you have? Uh, I would probably say like family holidays. <clears throat> Pardon me, I've, I've just recovered from COVID, so I have a little bit of a cough. No, you're good. <laughs> yeah, um, which is annoying, but I, I was fine, but it's just this little lingering cough. Um, definitely family holidays. When you're in the UK, most families will have a memory of going away to like Spain on a family all-inclusive holiday and you know the water parks food from morning till you go to sleep there's just food everywhere um you know just going out and exploring the Spanish towns and going to little shops with the little trinkets and things like that so I would say those kind of memories are my favorite all of us together I remember like the last family holiday. I think it was actually after Over the Rainbow. I was about 17, 18, something like that. 17, I think. And I remember thinking this is probably going to be our last family holiday because I'm I'm going to be 18 next year. And I, I doubt I'll even, you know, want to go on holidays with my family. Not so much that I didn't want to go, but I would be in a job or I oh, would yeah. be in college. So there'd be things getting in the way to do, you know, to do the summer holiday thing. But um, yeah, holidaying with my family. And then was there a conversation you had with your parents that stuck out to you? Like something either your mom or dad said that you still will just meant a lot, whether positively or negatively as well? I would say not a specific conversation, but I just remember being um, reminded to always be like super grateful for opportunities and the, I know not to talk all, always about Over the Rainbow, but that opportunity came I was so young that I think it would have been so easy for it to um make me kind of get carried away with myself and I suppose get big-headed and, and obnoxious and they made sure my feet stayed firmly on the ground and still do to this day you know they remind me that you're very lucky to do something that you love that for a lot of people is a hobby or a passion but you mm. do as a job um so I think that they've def they've they've definitely ingrained really good morals into me, which I'm very grateful for. Do you find it hard to be grateful, or do you think that's something <coughs> that, as either you've grown in over the years, or it's easier to do? I wouldn't say I find it hard to be grateful, but I find it sometimes I have to remind myself 
that I have been very lucky and that there are people I I'm so I'm really I'm quite a simplistic person Mm -hmm. so when I'm not in the razzle dazzle of musical theater or performing I'm very happy to just live a very under the radar life and Mm. I don't really search for fame and stardom it's just not my husband always jokes that I don't have the work ethic I don't have the push or the drive but I think it's more so that I'm just really happy to just stay under the radar I love to sing I love to perform and when the opportunity comes along I shine and go for it and I love it but when I'm not in in that zone I can kind of just slip off does that make sense I just kind of I'm happy if I was never to perform on a West End stage again I think I'd be okay but if I get to do it again I will absolutely love it is that I'm kind of a very yeah I'm kind of in the background person sometimes so I need I need I need reminding that the opportunities that I've had don't just you know land on your lap you do need to put a bit of yeah. work in whereas sometimes I can be a bit like oh something will come up you know an audition will come in it's fine whereas really like I'm feeling this now after having a baby I need to start pushing myself again whereas I'm very happy to just live this life in Wales with my baby and and be all cute and you know whereas really I need to earn money and to keep my profile I need to yeah. keep working so I'm just just having that you know reminder in the last couple of weeks actually it's been at the front of my mind what do you how do you find it balancing being a mom and doing something professional at the same time my instinct is I just want to be a mother um which whether that's right or wrong is anyone's opinion you know everybody's different some people can't wait to go back to work some people are kind of in the middle I feel like my heart wants to stay at home and be a mother but also then I, for example, I went to a concert on the weekend and it really inspired me to sing again because I was like, mm. oh, yeah, I do really miss that buzz, they, the buzz that they would have felt on stage. And I know that I am a good singer and that I enjoy it and people enjoy it and it makes people happy. So I'm kind of now coming to the point where I think, yeah, okay, I can push myself a bit more. I did go back to work when he was six weeks old. My first concert was when he was six weeks old and I've probably done between 10 and 20 concerts since then which is a decent amount yeah but not crazy you know it was I'd go away for a day come back and then maybe in a week's time I'd go away for another day so it's it's manageable but I should probably be trying to push it a bit more now okay so you you don't think it's been hard for you like spending time with your child you've actually found it the opposite (laughs) where you're not spending enough time doing what you what your profession is okay yeah I would definitely say that's my, again, whether it's right or wrong. I don't know. It's, um, I, I just see, I have friends in the industry that don't have children or, or maybe don't want children. And I know that the industry is their life. It's absolutely every part of their being has to yeah. be involved. And I get not jealous, but I sometimes think, oh, I wish I had a bit more of that. Like, oh, I can't, it's just, I suppose it's passion. <clears throat> for it but I think because I've always been such a family oriented person mm. that my my instinct is always to sway back to okay I'm going to spend quality time with my family and friends when I'm not in work and then I can kind of forget just forget to get back to the work thing <laughs> yeah what do you think if you were to write a book about your life so far what do you think you'd title it oh that's a very good question. Um, something, something connected to the Wizard of Oz, I would say. So something like, mm, this is a very good question that I feel like I need a few days to think about. <laughs> um, something like mm, the, the yellow brick road to happiness or something like that. Something with the, you know, like the journey to an mm-hmm. end goal so like yeah is the and what would the end goal be in your book <clears throat> for, for other people to remember me as someone who followed their dream coming from a very small town mm. to get to get to that London West End life but also kept her feet firmly on the ground and her family was everything to her 
kind of mm. thing. Yeah. That's a very, very family, family, family. Do you think you'd write a book? I have thought about this because I do have some amazing stories and and things that have happened to me the the people that I've met and the kind of knowledge and wisdom that was passed on to me from you know legends in the industry I have thought about it I don't know if I have enough to say yet um I think maybe once I've had a few more children and maybe a few more shows under my belt um maybe when I'm like 40 so in like 10 years time I'd probably have a few more things to say I do love an autobiography. I love reading people's autobiographies. So I definitely think I, I read them and think, yeah, I could write, I could, I could put some stories down. Whether yeah. anyone would buy it, I don't know, but yeah. What do you think has been the most beautiful thing about life? Like for you right now, what is the most beautiful thing in life for you? Is it your family or? My baby, 100%. Yeah. It's the e- that's the easiest question to answer because I've probably wanted I was very do you have the term broody in America? I don't know. You can what is it? So to be broody is like you pine to be oh. a mother parent. It's called broody? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't think that, like to be brooding. I don't know if maybe it, it, I, I don't know if it specifically refers to children. I think it does. I think I think it's you know, a, a, like a need to be a parent, yeah. um, which I I felt it from, honestly from the age of about twenty. I remember thinking, I just cannot wait to have a family. I can't wait for that kind of responsibility and unconditional love for for your children. I just couldn't wait. Um, so obviously I had to put that feeling on hold sensibly because as a woman, if I was to have had a child at 20, to then have the career that I was, I've been able to have since would probably have been nearly impossible. Mm-hmm. Um, and whether I could have then done it later in life, I don't know. So I'm glad that my kind of sensible brain went, no, let's do, do the career, like audition, work really hard, uh, and then getting wicked was the kind of okay I feel like I've reached kind of a pinnacle for now that was my dream role dream show mm-hmm. um, so then when that that passed and I think I was about 28 me and my husband had a you know a conversation okay we feel like we're we're ready um, he's at a point in his career that it made sense financially we felt stable all of these sensible things that you have to think about if you're lucky enough to be able to have children then you know I felt that was the time so yeah he he feels like I've waited a long time for him and now he's here he was so worth the wait and he's just oh the most I mean you can probably hear him he's he's having a little cry in the room but even when he cries I'm like it's a cute cry it's cute I love you so much yeah what do you hope that your son like thinks about you when he's older what do you want him to know you by that I was extremely loving but also gave him room to be himself and I didn't kind of push him in any direction but just gave him the opportunities so my husband my husband is a rugby player so he's very sporty and very um all about movement he wants he thinks that it's really important for children to be outdoors and getting that freedom and running around and burning off that energy whereas I obviously would love him to be a little bit musical and <laughs> we play guitar or piano um but then Ellis is also my husband is very intelligent so he academic uh, studies and things were very important to him growing up maths is you know his favorite subject very different to me not my favorite at all um so as long as we give him all the choices and be like you know do you want to try and play rugby do you want us to take you to gymnastics class do you want us to take you to the local library as long as we give him all the opportunities I want him to look back and think yeah I was lucky that my parents were in a position to give me these opportunities Mm. yeah what have you found really hard about life lately <clears throat> um 
I think rem- you kind of lose a little sense of identity when you have a baby, I think. Uh, I did. I have. I I now, oh, my brain is consumed by baby thoughts, which is, of course, the, a normal thing because I have to feed him. I have to make sure he goes to bed. I have right. to yeah, I have to keep him alive. <laughs> and that's very important. So um, remembering that I can sing and remembering that I have that side of me as well. And it's referring back to one of the earlier questions, it is that getting the balance. Mm. The opposite to most people, as you say, most people kind of feel like they don't have enough time with their family because they're having to really focus on the career. But um, I feel like I've put enough groundwork in that, I've given myself a bit of space to have a bit of free time. Oh, okay. But I do feel in the last couple of weeks, I'm like, okay, I I said today, actually, I'm going to start putting covers on Instagram again. I'm going to start just putting a little bit of music out here and there, just so I'm doing something, um, just to remind myself, you you can sing. That That is also part of your life. And that is also part of your identity. Do you feel guilty if you don't do it? Yeah, yeah, I do. Which is weird because only because other people say things like, mm-hmm. for example, people keep saying, what show are you going back into? You know, now Jack's nearly eight months. You know, when when are you going back to the West End? I mean, it's not that easy. You have to audition. You, it, I can't just bring up Les Mis and say, hey, I want to be in the show when can I start it doesn't work like that obviously so um yeah I think I think that yeah mm. what do you think what does life mean for you oh very deep um I get quite um overwhelmed thinking about life and like how long we have left and things like that. So I'd probably say life means to me just completely enjoying everything in the moment. Mm, okay. I really have to stop sometimes. We're very lucky. We've been away on some like beautiful holidays this year. Um and just reminding myself to like really treasure those moments. Like also time seems to have just sped up by 10 since having yeah. a baby everything just seems like I can't it's like a click of the fingers and a month has gone by so I I I do think it's living in the moment is really important in life because you just don't know what's around the corner you don't know that sounds really morbid but you just don't know how long how long this amazing time is going to last so yeah I think living in the moment do you um have something you haven't done yet that you want to do in your life I'm really trying to push so I I've done a bit of presenting recently and I'm really trying to push that I would love to see that kind of succeed a bit more Um, presenting like yes so interviewing people similar to what you're doing but okay I've done it on BBC one is our kind of main channel over here and I've I've done a bit of work for a program called Sunday Morning Live and interviewed a couple of people, um, oh. and then that's gone out, which has had a really good reception. But I would love to to take it to the next level where kind of I'm interviewing people on hard hitting topics. I'm very passionate about the environment and okay. women's health, ba- women and baby health together, um, and kind of yeah hormones in women and all the things we have to go through that don't really get spoken about so I would love to see I, I've not really nailed that yet I've not nailed being able to do some hard-hitting interviews okay and be received you know quite quite well like a podcast you'd like to have or yeah maybe a podcast I've met I've spoke to my agent about potentially doing a podcast I mean podcasts are kind of everywhere so t- to get one that are, is yeah is successful maybe would be a little bit tricky but I do think my niche would be speaking probably mostly to women or people that have suffered similar things to myself or something I can connect with someone with doesn't maybe doesn't have to just be women but you know people that either have had a baby or 
have suffered, I've had suffered with adult acne, maybe people with that. So things that I can kind of relate to. So then the conversation is, it kind of goes both ways, you know, it, it's not just me asking someone something about themselves. Yeah. It's a very specific topic. So maybe, maybe that would work. I haven't seen many like that. So yeah, that maybe. would be so fascinating. I'd love to listen to something like that. I, I've never heard of something like that before, honestly. Yeah. So maybe that's where, that's where I should go next when I've got a bit more free time. Um, cause you know, I look, I have Jack every single day Yeah, and, um, it would be asking a family member to, you know, dedicate a set amount of time every week, probably, mm-hmm. so I could go off and do that. So it would it would take someone else giving up their time for me to be able to do that. So it needs to, I need to have a really good think about it and then uh, put the wheels in motion. So I would say maybe, maybe just after Christmas, maybe January, I'll have a little, have a little go. I know you mentioned you're passionate about the environment what what element of nature do you really enjoy like learning about or looking at yeah so I'm really I have eco guilt I don't know if you've um ever come across that term where for example if I buy something from the shop that has plastic on it Mm -hmm. I feel really bad that I've bought that because plastic is really bad so I really try and buy the better options even though most of the time they aren't there so Mm. I I would love again to interview you know people in the government and and say why aren't you doing more so that consumers can make the greener choice because at the moment everything's kind of greenwashed and you think you're making the better choice and then you find out oh that company's sponsored by Shell so they're a massive oil company and it's all these things so yeah eco guilt is is something that I would love to again talk about on a podcast because there's so many elements of it. We, I, I don't know what recycling is like in America, but in the UK, it's r- really big. Everybody tries to recycle from home. And if you don't, you get fined. Um, but then you see documentaries where people are finding recycling bags full of plastic that have just been kind of sold to China. And then oh. nothing, it's, it's really deep and, you know, probably a bit conspiracy theory is but um things like that I'm like I get so frustrated and think I'm just a small little ant in this world that can't actually do anything but I want to create a future for my children that so they don't have to deal with all of this crap that we've basically created um yeah so that's how do you think you developed that um I don't really know I think I've watched a lot of David Attenborough documentaries and okay. I what I went I'm vegetarian and I went vegan for a little while after watching another documentary so I think just just picking up which again these programs are probably slightly biased to their agenda but um I just got really affected by them got quite more I'm quite an emotional person so I thought well if it affects you this bad if you know if you if you're crying because of the way animals are treated and then x y and z you need to do something about it so yeah I, I don't know I think it's just I'm quite a compassionate person and yeah I think it probably comes from that now when when did you start the vegetarian diet was that recently or it was six six years ago now okay so, yeah I was 24 uh was in Wicked so how have you found that because I I've known personally people who've started out doing that and then over time they just weren't either they weren't finding the right nutrients or they just didn't find mm-hmm. good products and so they ended up giving up yeah and that's very understandable especially I, I'm being very generic and probably stereotypical here but in America I know you it's quite a meaty culture yeah. right you have your barbecue yeah. and things like that so in the UK I wouldn't say the meat culture is as big um so maybe there's more options here to be vegetarian but when I did it, I lived in London and I went vegan first, firstly, I went straight in the deep end. Um, and I did struggle at the start, you know, you end up eating a lot of carbs, you end up eating a lot of rice and potatoes and things that you just think, okay, this is quick and easy, but you're right. You're not getting the right nutrients. So I had to do a a lot of research. Luckily I'm a, I'm a pretty good cook. 
And I enjoyed that. Whereas I think for someone who doesn't like cooking, it would probably be really stressful and you would end up just eating yeah, pasta all the time. So it's about education, I think. And mm. which is another thing. Yeah, I could go on and on with these topics, but like education for children with nutrition and food and things like that is really not great. So people just don't know that, you know, you need to have protein, carbs and fats in your diet and you need to have all these extra fibrous things. You we just don't get taught that in school. I don't know if you do uh, in your schools, but it's just maybe well, maybe it's better now, but when I was when I was in school, it just wasn't there. I remember my first catering class. I don't know if um again if you have them there but we we made like a cake or a pizza mm. everything was really one unhealthy but well, not unhealthy but not something you want to be eating every day and mm. two something I would never cook in my house I would never think okay I'm going to do a pineapple upside down cake which is like a very British dessert so I think they need to teach you to cook things you know, like how to scramble an egg so that you can make scrambled eggs on toast, just basic food that you will take on into your life and cook. You know, if you go to university or college, you know how to cook a really good lasagna or something. Yeah. That's something that you can, you know, is sustainable, cheap, but also isn't too unhealthy or high in bad things, you know. Mm. What do you like? What's your favorite thing to cook that you Ooh. that you cook a lot? I love a curry. I'm a really big curry person <laughs> because again, with being vegetarian, you can just put every vegetable in there. You can, you know, if I look in the fridge and there's, I've got red peppers and tomatoes, sweet potato, mm. uh, so that you can just chuck it all in a curry. Or I do love a bur- like a burrito bowl or yeah like a butter bowl kind of thing so you I like a lot of variety so you know I'll have like a black bean dish a bit of avocado some sweet corn some tomatoes some rice and then I might top it with some tofu or something like that mm-hmm. um so I yeah things I do like eating healthy but I like tasty as well so it has to be a bit, you know variety it's a good combination because a lot of healthy things are not as tasty which they could be more tasty you know yeah 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 I'm a big I'm a big foodie as well so that's something that I want to get better at um I follow a lot of kind of nutritionists and um I suppose chefs on Instagram and take inspiration from those people and you kind of touched on this already but what if you had to pick one thing because I know you're passionate about many things what would you pick that you think that you would like to see changed about the world if you could pick one thing definitely people's um mindset towards the environment because I think a lot of people have the oh well how can I make a difference in one person which I I do understand that thought mm. process but if everyone thought oh well if I do my little bit then the difference would be mass it would be so impactful you know, I try and turn, it's very small, but I try and turn the light switches off. Or if I'm brushing my teeth, I won't leave the tap running. I make sure I turn it off. It's very, very small things. Um, Making sure that if I go to a store, I buy the more eco-friendly option, as long as it's not expensive, because sometimes they can be the more expensive option, which again is yeah. really annoying. And is the government, you know, they, they are the people that control that kind of thing. We can't, we can't help that. So yeah, I would say people's mindset towards the environment. Um, <clears throat> for example, you know, I feel really passionate on people. People get pressured uh, and made to feel bad that they've made the wrong choice. I, I remember seeing something on TV a few years back where a lady was saying, you know, do you know that a woman uses like 250,000 sanitary products in her life? you know, that's really bad. That's what the person on the telly was saying. And I thought you're putting all of that pressure on say a young 16 year old girl who's just, you know, started having her period and, (sighs) but she's, she's been told that, oh gosh, if you use these sanitary products, it's bad for the environment. We'll make the options better for her. She has no you know, other options really. There's only, I mean, I try and use a moon cup. I don't know if you've seen one of those. Yes. 
Yeah. Yeah. So I try and use them. They're not fantastic. They they do the job sometimes, but they're not, you know, brilliant. So, you know, for us to make that choice, make the choice available for us and then we'll make it. So, yeah, that's the other thing. People, the pressure being put on people to mm-hmm. make the right choice when the, you know, electric cars are being sold as this amazing new green option when actually if you do your research apparently it's just as bad because the batteries that they use in the electric cars take like a million billion years to you can't like get rid of them you can't dispose of them so Mm. it's just a whole mess of things yeah (laughs) what do you is there someone currently you look up to so um either someone who's famous or someone in your home that you want to be more like I mean, again, to touch on the environmental thing, I would say David Attenborough is completely inspirational, mm. especially for someone who knows he hasn't got, you know, 50 years left on the planet, but wants to make a difference and wants to make sure that we look after this amazing planet that we have and we don't burn it to the ground. So, yeah, some someone like him who's towards the, the end of their career, yeah. um and is still fighting for these things you know yeah do you have like a favorite book oh um probably not a favorite book I love Harry Potter so I've read read those um but I prefer the films I'm a film I'm a film girl really (laughs) but um I love a crime thriller book so things Do you like, like Agatha Christie at all? Well, I've not really read much Agatha Christie. More things like Gone Girl or The Girl on okay. the Train. And so more modern crime thrillers where <laughs> you don't know who did it. Yeah. So I suppose Agatha Christie would be the original kind of novel like that. I've heard that Girl on the Train is very good. I have not read it yet. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Really, really good. That one, the book is better than the film. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. Um, do you have a favorite time period in history that you'd prefer? Like if you didn't live now, if you had to pick a different time, is there a different period of time that you would like to live in? I think I have some kind of a f- connection to the 80s. I don't know why. I think my mother was probably, how old would my mother have been? Mm, like in her teenage years in the 80s and photos and the music and just hearing you know stories of that time the tech technology was just coming in so it's very new so everything would have been really exciting and wow this is cool but also not to a point where it consumes you every single yeah. every day um the music me again just I love that kind of music it's very feel good energetic but melodic and inspiring like you know Whitney Houston in the 80s Mm -hmm. yeah that kind of beautiful singing but makes you feel emotions um and the clothes and the hair you know the big the big hair I I kind of love that yeah Mm. yeah so then two more questions for you um first do you have an animal that you think your personality is like My personality is probably something like a giraffe because I don't know I'm I'm quite I can be quite docile I suppose but then I don't know they remind me they're quite clumsy I don't know when the baby giraffe is born probably a baby giraffe rather than an adult giraffe (laughs) because they kind of fall over and um but they're vegetarian <clears throat> that's what I mean um I just really like giraffes I think it's my fav- favorite animal whether my personality is most like one I don't know but it's my favorite animal <clears throat> wow okay and then the last question is and this can be either music you've sang or your own music or any type of music um do you think there's a song that describes who you are or what you resonate with a lot <clears throat> hmm I don't know. I mean, my my favorite song to sing is um, "Songbird." That is just I don't mm. know. 
it just sits in my voice really nice. But the actual lyrics probably don't resonate with me as much as other songs. Um, I, mm. Oh, maybe Imagine, John Lennon. Because, That's a beautiful song, yeah. Yeah. If you listen to the lyrics in that, he was very much, you know, he, he wanted change. He wanted everyone to love everyone. It's very, very basic but amazing messages in the song you know imagine no conflict imagine peace imagine there was no wars imagine everything was just calm yeah I would say imagine that's the answer that's that's a good pick 